Okay, so tingnan natin ako ng calendar. So, i-open ko ng 17 hanggang 19 yung dalawang quiz, 5 and 6. And then, i-open ko ng 19 yung 7 and 8. I think tatlo, o no? 5 to 10 questions lang ata yun. Okay, you just watch the video and then that's it. Okay, now, somebody messaged me na hindi makita or hindi available yung PowerPoint slide. Bakit kaya? Bakit kaya? Bakit kaya? Ito yun, di ba? Okay, nakuha nyo to. 7 8. Ito, hindi nyo nakuha to. Bakit? Pag ano sa group chat ko na lang i-post. Bakit kaya hindi siya makalusot? Ayaw eh, baka nga Lahat ba? Hindi makuha yung mass spec Samantala yung iba, kuha yung electrochem Okay, sige. Pag ano, try ko ayusin bukas. Bukas dito sa time ko. Anyway, so let's continue. So tapusin na natin yung module 4. Yung mga question ng module 4. So ang tanong dito, how is the fluorescence emission spectrum differs from the fluorescence excitation spectrum, which closely resembles an absorption spectrum? So I think the one that we cover here has something to do with uh, fluorescence, right? And what have you learned from fluorescence? So usually, Fluorescence, they are more sensitive than uh, anong tawag dito? absorbance. But the only problem with fluorescence is not all sample fluoresce. Okay? So the thing that you need to, to know about this, doon sa topic ng luminescence, how is fluorescence different from phosphorescence? And I think I gave you some example there, yung mga CSI example pa. Ano yung ginamit nila sa CSI? Na usually pag gusto nila may makitang DNA, they use that. Anyone? Hmm, hindi nanonood. Anyone? <laughs> Pagkasulat ko. So, type din eh. <laughs> okay, so luminol is an example. So, it is a fluorescent material okay, that interact with the DNA. So, when they interact, it causes fluorescent samples. So, 
the ones uh, we could say uh, fluorescence, meron kang emission and excitation wavelength or emission and excitation spectrum. So usually they are what? Mirror image. So arin dito yung emission spectrum, arin dito yung excitation spectrum. So if ilagay ko dito ng A, ilagay ko dito yung B. Alin yung emission spectrum? A or B? What is the emission spectrum here? At yung isa yung tinatawag na excitation spectrum. Sige nga. B po. Okay, so the emission is the B. So as you could see, emission comes after excitation. So usually, what happens is emission, you apply energy of what? Higher or lo uh, lower energy? Ano yung in-apply mong energy? Higher, high energy ba siya or lower energy? Usually, you apply it at higher energy, at short, uh, which means shorter wavelength. Okay? So, if you have an emission scan, so usually, ganun yung makikita mo. Tapos, nandoon yung tinatawag natin excitation wavelength. Okay? You excite it. You apply a higher energy. So, if you apply a higher energy, what happens? Okay? So, the molecules will go up, okay, at the excited state, and it's not uh, what we call stable, and then it will go down, okay? Sa singlet state ba siya pupunta? Usually, doon, if, if you read, na-encounter nyo ba yan, Jablonski diagram? If in one of my uh, what we call lectures, recorded lectures, nandoon yung Jablonski diagram. It is there. I mentioned it uh, in fluorescent. Okay? So, doon, what happened when you excite, when it goes down to the ground state, it's going to emit something. Okay? Now, the other one, on the other hand, meron kang emission scan or emission wavelength, tapos titignan mo yung kanyang excitation can. And, and this is similar to what? Alin dito yung kasulat ng absorbance sa dalawa? Anyone? Alin dito sa dalawang scan ang katulad sa absorbance? Usually, it is the excitation wavelength. In fact, if you want to determine if your sample is uh, fluorescence, you can get the absorbance. And then when you look at the absorbance, the one that gives you a higher peak, you can choose that as the excitation wavelength and see if it's going to emit. Okay? Now, if, if your sample can fluoresce, okay, fluorescence is a more sensitive method. At smaller, uh, we could say, uh, concentration, you can get a higher signal if your sample is fluorescent. Okay? Are you familiar with tonic water? Familiar ba kayo sa tonic water? Meron bang ganyan sa Pinas? Hindi. Hindi yan alkali water. Hindi rin yan <coughs> sparkling water. Hindi rin yan carbonated water. Tonic water, meron siyang tinatawag na substance na called quinine. So ano yung quinine? Anyone? This is the first time for you to hear the compound quinine. Quinine! On cocktail. 
Yun! Tinumbok mo! Malaria drug. So they use tonic water to prevent malaria. Okay? Y yun yung ano nung quinine. Okay? Now, yung quinine na yan, fluorescent yan. So, one way to analyze quinine is this what we call using fluorescent. So, so dito, uh, yan yung sample na ginagamit namin to, in a fluorescent experiment. Okay? Yung presence ng quinine or concentration ng quinine sa tonic water. Okay? So, once you have a fluorescent material, you can use fluorescent. And there's still more uh, to think about uh, fluorescent. In fact, uh, that's one of my specialization when I was in grad school. Okay, I, I look at uh, some samples that are fluorescent, and I have a, a, a paper in a journal called Journal of Fluorescence. Okay? And this is also synonymous to the next, next question. I'm being next question, not in. So, pag nakita natin yung problem set, why is spectrofluorimeter more sensitive than spectrophotometry? Okay, so spectrophotometry, yan yung absorbance. Okay? So, ang nangyari kasi sa spectrofluorimeter, ini-excite mo sa isang fixed excitation wavelength. Okay? Tapos tinitingnan mo yung emission. So usually, ano yung conformation ng uh, what we call fluorescence? Di ba absorbance? If you're going to look at absorbance, ito yung sample mo. Papasok yung light source tapos lalabas. But in the fluorescence, ganun din ba yung conformation niya? So pag ito yung light source mo, saan mo siya titingnan? Dito din? Usually it is what? 90 degree angle. Okay? Meron kang tinatawag na L-shape kapag nag-iisa lang yan or T-shape. So you just try to look okay, at the uh, signal that you can observe. Now the question, why do we, you have to use this configuration? Ano mangyayari kapag diretso doon? This is a practical question. What do you think happen kung diretso lang yung pag-monitor mo doon sa fluorescent? Very good. There's, there's a light source interference. Hindi mo alam kung yung signal ay nanggagaling sa light or sa light source or doon sa fluorescent sample mo. And it can also burn your... <laughs> detector which happened to me Paanga -anga ako eh. but I think it's my fault because we're using a laser source and laser source is laser is laser light source is a very powerful uh, light source okay so when you have the excitation wavelength constant so you're going to measure the emission as a function of wavelength. So, tinitingnan mo yan. So, ganun. Okay? Now, in the excitation spectrum, yung emission naman is measured at one wavelength while the excitation wavelength is varied. So, the excitation spectrum more closely assembled, we could say, yung tinatawag mong absorption. Now, in terms of what we call uh, sensitivity, so maybe we could say yung sa fluorescence, yung analytical signal mo, ito yung formula eh. Fluorescence is equal to 2.3 times K proportional of P. 
and the magnitude of this fluorescence and that of the sensitivity can be enhanced by increasing the source intensity. So that's why I told you in experience now when we're using laser. So laser is much, we could say, powerful than a xenon arc lamp. Okay? So pag mataas yung power intensity mo, mas mataas yung fluorescent signal na makukuha mo. Okay, now, sa so spectrophotometry, paano yung analysis mo? Ang, ano yung signal mo? A. Tapos ano yung formula doon sa absorbance? Log of P over P. So pag in-increase mo, okay, yung P or di kaya yung detector response is accompanied by increase of P. So pag in-increase mo to, i-increase mo rin yung uh, output ng P. So yung ratio na yun, walang nagbabago. Di ba? Hindi kagaya dito. Ito lang yung pag in-increase mo to, increase na yung fluorescent signal mo. Pero dito, usually, pag in-increase mo yan, mag increase din to. Kasi di ba ang ano natin, paano ba yan? P and then P. So pag pinaas mo to, tataas din yan. Pero dito, pag tinaas mo to, tataas to. Clear? Intiende? How do you say that in Bisaya? Kabaluna? <laughs> Kasabot na. <laughs> ah, kabatch kong taga-Dabaw. At ano? Jensen. Now, the next question that we have there. So why is an electrochemical atomizer more sensitive than a flame atomizer? So I think, anong part to? When we're talking about atomizer, <laughs> and some of you got this wrong, right? Ang atomizer, hindi niya ginagawang atom. Yung sample nyo, right? Tapos dalawa pa atang question na ilagay ko. <laughs> Ano yung ginagawa ng atomizer? Ina-ionize ba niya? Pinapaliit lang niya yung sample. So kung same sa answer kayo dun, mabigat yun. But hopefully, pag lumabas ulit sa final, hindi na kayo uulit. Okay? So it has something to do with what? Yung electrochemical versus flame. I think it has something to do with efficiency. Why? Yung electrical, you only need less sample. Uh, it requires much less sample. Uses a large fraction of the sample and keep the atomic vapor in the beam for a longer time compared to a flame. So yun yung main reason why <clears throat> an electrochemical atomizer is more sensitive than flame atomizer. Okay? And then yung, yung next question is still similar to this one, yung pagkakaiba ng FAAS and GFAAS. Ano ano ang ibig sabihin ng FAAS? Sige nga. Give me an F. Give me a G. Give me an F. <laughs> Paano sinabi mo? Give me a G. Give me an F. Give me a girlfriend. <laughs> Parang ganun eh. So ano pagkakaiba ng FAAS? Kaysa sa GFAAS. Anong F dito? Flame po. Flame. Kala ko fire sasabihin nyo eh. 
Okay, how about sa dito, sa GF? Malamang hindi yung girlfriend, di ba? What does GF stand for? It stands for graphite furnace. Okay? Now, you are asked the question here, under what analytical parameters is FAS more suitable technique than GFAAS? And under what analytical parameters is GFAS a more suitable technique than FAS? So we could say this is an open-ended question. Okay. So if you're going to look at the definition here, uh, medyo ano kasi tricky yung word na suitable eh. Now, maybe we can look for specifics. So if we want law, uh, we could say detection limit. Ali na mas maganda? Lower detection limit. Sige nga. Ito yung mga true or false question na lalabas. So if you have a lower detection limit, GFAS, GFAAS is much better than uh, FAAS. Now how about throughput? Tsaka reproducibility. Alin yung mas beneficial? So if this is the case, then FAAS is the one that is more beneficial. Tandaan nyo yan. Ito yung mga question na lalabas sa finals. Kasi tapos na tayo mag-quiz dito eh. Okay? Now next one. Why are deviation from Beer's law more common in IR spectroscopy than in UVBs? Anong sagot? Bakit common daw yung deviation ng Beer's Law sa IR compared doon sa UB? What can you say about the peaks at IR? Compare it with the UBB peaks. Usually, di ba IR? Pwede kang maging, uh, ano eh, usually ano sa IR? Percent transmittance, di ba? Tapos makikita mo ganun. Tapos, samantala yung UBBs yun. Right? Pwede rin itong maging ano, pag i-transport mo yan, pwede mo rin gawin itong absorbance. Y y y yung mirror image lang yan lalabas. Ginawa ko na lang ganito. Okay? So if you're going to look at the IR, they are what? Usually they are uh, sharper. Okay? Compared to the UVBs. So kapag sharper siya, most likely they will be deviation from the Beer's Law. Okay? Deviations in the wavelength selection results in a much larger deviations in the absorbance in IR spectroscopy than what is seen in molecular UBBs. Okay, at saka marami din yung pick doon sa uh, what we call IR. But if you're going to look at the UBBs, ang makikita mo lang kasi dyan, yung summation ng lahat ng mga ganyan, hindi mo lang siya nakikita sa UBBs. But if you're going to do, I don't know, uh, computational, makikita mo ganyan yan sila. Tapos ang makikita mo lang ay yung sum. Yung broad peak. Okay? And this is also has something to do with the next question. Bakit hindi absorbance ang ginagamit sa IR? Why, why is it more common to report UBBs using absorbance? Whereas, it is more common to report IR spectra using the UBBs. So maybe it has something to do with what? Sino sisisihin natin dito? Uh, 
Ano si sisihin natin dito? Yung older instrument. Kasi yung uh, older IR instrument, uh, usually they recorded the data on a roll of paper called a strip chart. Naabutan ko pa yan. But we don't use it in the IR. We use it in uh, chromatography. Okay? So the paper would roll past a pen at the same rate at which the spectrometer scan the sample. So the pen was attached to an arm. <laughs> Yung parang pentel pen na maliit tapos iya yeah, ano yan Mag magra-write siya kung ano yung signal na nakukuha niya okay so uh, yung, yung pen na yun attached to an arm doon sa tinatawag nating potential stat so if we have this amplified current AC current okay uh, uh, not, not amplified ka not AC current amplified current hindi yung tinatawag na AC okay So yun, parang seismograph. Pero mas sharp pa nga yung pen ng ses seismograph eh. Kaysa dito sa IR. Parang pentel pen talaga siyang maliit na nandoon. So ang nangyari doon, yung amplified current uh, from the detector would move the arm up and down as the paper rolled past generating a peak as a function of a wa wavelength. So what was measured really is a function or uh, what was what was being measured were proportional to the transmitted light through the sample so kapag transmitted light yung mini measure mo anong kinikuha mo doon yung percent transmission okay now yung early spectrometers naman they lack, they, they lack the electronic sophistication to convert transmittance to absorbance So part of the reason we use, we could say, transmittance sa IR a historical. But the new one, usually me, I prefer to use absorbance. In, in the papers that I have in IR, uh, if you're going to look at them, if you've seen some of the papers that I written about Raman and IR, we use usually absorbance compared to transmittance. Okay? So modern FTIR instruments, they can easily now report the data either as transmittance or absorbance. Pwede mo siyang i-convert. Kasi mirror image lang siya eh. Okay? And absorbance is the advantage of what? Yung tinatawag nating linear proportional. Okay? It is linear, uh, it is proportional linearly with the concentration. So the reason we have not shifted the convention to absorbance rather than the percent transmittance is probably due to the fact that FTIR is seldom used for quantitative. If you want the quantitative one, you have to use absorbance mode, not the percent transmitted mode. Eh, yung IR naman pang identify lang ng ano. Hmm? Saan natin ginagamit yung IR? We just want to determine the presence of the functional group. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, Chem 140, meron kayong isang spectra and you have to deduce the organic structure based on the given IR spectrum. Right? And last but not the least, flashback. <laughs> oh, my IR na may MS, may NMR. And that's what makes you unique. Okay? Hindi, wala kayong instrument, pero kaya niyo mag-interpret no result. So the, the, the next, the last one that we have here is what we call virtual state. So saan pumapasok yung virtual state na to? Anong spectroscopy specifically? It is in Raman. Yung Raman kasi hindi siya kasama, let's say, sa Jab Jablonski diagram. Raman is what? 
is more of scattering. Unlike UVBs, that is more on what? Absorption, fluorescence, absorption and emission. Raman is more on UVBs. Okay? So when we're talking about the virtual state, virtual, parang tayo, virtual. Okay? It's usually an unquantized electronic energy state that lies between the ground state and uh, excited electronic state ng isang molecules. Okay? It lies between the ground state and an excited quantized electronic state of the molecule. So that ends module 4. Question before we go to module 5. So ang gagawin ko lang sa module 5 is yung first 4 and then Yung 5 at saka 6, idididuce nyo yan. Okay? So, ano yung structure na yan? May mass spec ba tayo? Natuloy ba yung pagbili ng mass spec ni, ano? Ni Ma'am Completo? Anyone working with Dr. Completo? Here or doing thesis with her? Okay, Mahia. How will I na mention sa class? Meron ba magwo work sa kanya dito? Sino dito na thesis na? Oh. Si Irvin na mag-work sa kanya. Sino dito nag, may ano na? Yung, ano ba tawag yung first sem ng thesis dyan? Outline. So yung student niya sa ChemEc nag ano? Hmm. So wala pang nag outline sa inyo. Hmm. Meron akong collaborator dyan. Tumukuha siya ng undergrad. Mm. <laughs> ano yung pangalan doon? Kalimutan ko pangalan doon. Eh. Ah. Si Melvin? I sent email ako. <laughs> Oo. Kasi inahanap ko pa yung raw data ko na gagamitin niya. It's more on, uh, I don't know, chemometrics. Kasi ang hirap naman kumuha ng ano doon. Batch 2019. Anong batch na ba? Ayun, Moldak. Yun na nga. So, he is asking me if I have some uh, LCMS data, which I have a lot from my uh, graduate study course. Or no, not during my grad study. But I have to do uh, what we could upload it one by one, by one which is a large file. Okay. So in case you want to, to work with him or indirectly with me, yun yung uh, thesis problem. So that is what we call mass spec. Okay? So mass spec, they call it as the chip NMR. Sino nag-define ito? Yung definition nila ng mass spec at chip NMR, sito sa tingin nyo nag-define nung code na yun. Siyempre, mga gumagamit ng NMR. Okay? NMR usually is the high end. 
Okay. Uh, 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 ang NMR kasi you tells you the position of the proton, whether it is carbon or oxygen, oh, no, not, not oxygen, carb, uh, hydrogen. Samantala yung mass spec, it just gives you the mass to charge ratio. Now, let's just go over this one. So, are you familiar with the heart and soap ion source? So, I hope you start what we call watching already the video. So, meron tayong ion source. So meron yan tinatawag nating soft ionization source versus hard ionization source. So ano sa tingin niyo yung difference ng dalawa? So depende kung what we call soap or what we call uh, hard ang, ga ang gagamitin nyo, you have to look at ano ba yung application na ina-analyze nyo? Is it for quality or quantitative method? So pag quality, anong source ang gusto nyo? Anong ion source usually ang prefer? Hmm. Dama ba yun? Hard for quantity, soft for quality. So sa tingin nyo, okay, we have hard. Saan mas maraming peaks na makikita nyo? Molecular ion peak. Sa hard or doon what we call sa soft? Usually, it's something to do doon sa fragments, di ba? So, kapag more fragments, more ano? So kapag more fragments, more peaks. So saan lumalabas yung more fragments? Sa hard ion, uh, ion source or sa soft ion source? Usually, if you have a hard what we call fragments, you have what? More fragments, more peaks, and thus used for qualitative methods. So when we're talking about qualitative method, kasama dyan yung identification ng structure. Okay? But for quantitative method, ang logical selection ninyo ay yung tinatawag nating SOP. Bakit? Hindi ka na, wala ka naman pakialam doon sa fragments eh. You're looking at the overall molecule. You want to see the amount of it and you base it on the peak height. Tama? So, mata saan mataas yung signal? Sa hard or sa soft? Okay? So since mataas yung signal sa SOP, that is good for quantitative analysis. Make sense? So for, for purpose of qualitative analysis where you want to look at the structure, you're going to go for the hard ionization source. Now, if you want to uh, quantitatively determine the amount of your substance, you go for the soap ion, ion source. Okay? Claro ba tayo doon? Now, next one. 
So ano yung mga gagamitin nating ionization dito? Dioxin. Anong meron yung dioxin? Shit, susulat ko po pala yung paper dito. Dioxin. Okay. Anong natutunan yung mga ionization? Positive ion. I, uh, electron ionization. Why? Because you have electronegative elements, which is your chlorine. And it's make up a significant volume of the molecular indicator that uh, it would be a useful method for quantitative purposes. Yung NICI. Alam niyo po ano yung NICI doon sa lecture. Okay? Next one. Metalloproteases. Ano mga yan? These are what? Mga ACE, ACE, ACE. ACE, ACE enzyme. ACE, ACE enzyme. <laughs> They are an enzyme na nag-aano doon sa what? Sa metal. Okay. So, anong usually papano mo dito? It's either MALDI or electron sparingization, ESRI. Why? Because the, the metalloproteases, they have a high molecular uh, mass. And what do you do? Iaano mo siya? I-break down mo siya. So, ang gagamitin mo dyan is some sort of a MALDI type or ESI. Okay? Last but not the least, the metals. Anong gagamitin mo if you want to analyze arsenic and lead in here? So you're going to use ano? Anong letters? ICPMS. Ano ibig sabihin na ICP? Anyone? Inductively coupled plasma. Yan yung expensive version of AAS. Kasi by the end, dapat malaman ninyo, let's say, sabihan ka, magtayo ka ng lab mo, bibigyan kita ng 50 million. So ano yung mga instrument na bibilhin mo? Okay. So ICP is the high end uh, instrument to measure metals. And then the next question that we have here, how do the spectra for electron impact, yung EI, field ionization, yung FI, and chemical ionization sources, yung CI, differs from one another? Sige nga. Ano ang difference ng EI sa CI at FI? So saan yung dito yung merong most fragmentation? Okay, so the one that will give you 
or produces the most fragmentation and the most complex spectra is the AI. So ano to? Hard soap. Is this a hard uh, source or a soap ion source? Usually this is a hard one. Okay. <clears throat> now yung FI, ano meron dyan? Siya yung merong simplest spectra. Now how about sensitivities? Ano yung sensitive? So we could say EI and CI are more sensitive than field ionization. Now, some of you in the near future may go abroad. So there's a possibility that you're going to use this what we call instrument. Now, MS is now used to this so-called proteonomics. Are you familiar with the term proteonomics? Narinig nyo na ba yung term na proteonomics? So proteonomics is just large-scale study of your what? The proteomes. So ano ba yung proteomes? These are just set of protein na pinoproduce ng ano, organism, system, or any other biological stuff. So uh, kasama may bijan yung tinatawag na polyconomics. Okay. Uh, and other, yung tinatawag nating genomics. So geno genomics is more on the genome. Uh, proteomics is more on this what we call the uh, proteome. Large scale study usually siya ng protein. So usually ang ginagamit nila is yung mass spec. So tinitingnan nila yung fragmentation na nagaano ng mass spec and then they can deduce okay, the thing there. So usually yung mass spec uh, involves usually in what? Four tasks sa Proteonomics. Uh, I, I, uh, uh, the one that I did is similar to that. Okay. At its earlier stage. Pero yung umalis ako, mas umano na yung, ano na yun, yung field na yun, uh, nag-boom. Na, na so the way that you're going to do is you're going to create ions from the analyte molecules. And then what you're going to do, you separate ions based on mass and charge. And then you detect ions and determine their mass to charge ratio. So based on mass and char uh, uh, charge and mass. And then after that, what you're going to do is you're going to select and fragment ions of interest to give you structural information. So meron kang MS, MS, or we could say the MS, MS, MS. So binibrate down mo siya. Okay. So there's two approach on this proteomics yung tinatawag natin bottom up. Tsaka top down. Right? Narinig na ba niyo yung bottom up? Mga taga LB kayo. Okay, mo sino? <laughs> Sabi na nga ba eh. <laughs> Okay, magsinungaling taga LV din ako. 
May 21 years old. Graduate na ako sa Toma. <laughs> At yung dorm ko ay notorious. <laughs> Pero yung chance to mira din doon sa dorm na yun. <laughs> I don't know if you have heard the, uh, the dorm name Co-op. So I stayed there for one and one half years. Sir, bakit one and one half now? Hindi ko na kaya uminom. <laughs> Every night kami umiinom doon. First week, mayaman pa kami. Gilbis sa katang. Pero pag last week, yung bilog sa katubig na. <laughs> okay? So, let's go back here. Bottom up versus what we call top down. So, when we're talking about bottom up approach, that's where most analysis or proteins are done. Uh, by digestion of protein. So th th there's what we call digestion of protein. So kapag nagda-digest ka ng proteins, ano magpo-form? Your proteins will break down into what? Sige nga, biochem nyo. It will break down to amino acids ba agad? Siyempre, peptides muna, di ba? Tapos amino acid. Now, yung top-down approach naman, you obtain the sequence information of the intact protein. So, yun yung difference. Okay? So, I, I, I will stop here now kasi itong kasunod na question dito, I want you to work on it. Kailan nyo pwedeng isubmit yan? Ito na yung last na parang isasubmit nyo pwera sa quiz. Kayo, kaya nga itong natanong kayo eh. So, isang item lang yan ha. So, Friday, kasi ilalagay ko yung depository doon, tapos isiset ko yung deadline. Friday what? 11.59pm, Philippine time? So, ibig sabihin, magmimit pa muna tayo. And just we'll discuss what we call the chapter... Uh, module 6, problem set na binigay ko na rin sa inyo. Uh, 5 and 6. And if ever tapos na tayo sa klase natin, uh, hindi pa rin yung end ng ano natin, uh, I'm going to send messages because what I'm trying going to do right now is I'm doing that the short problem solving usually now in ano ko gen chem pero iniisip ko baka gawin ko na rin yung analytical tsaka yung field of specialization ko kasama to and I'm going to invite you to watch those videos okay so parang uh, I don't know if you have watched that thing so right now puro ano muna tawag dito Jen ke muna. But I think you can w watch them when you take the. Tanggalin ko. Ay, ano ko na yung record, okay?